Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Subaru Outback Wagon, we're gonna be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver. Before we get into that though, let's just take a minute and check this out. Make sure it's the right hitch for you. Putting a trailer hitch on the back of a Subaru uh, just makes sense. You know, it looks right at home. People use these vehicles to do a ton of different things. You know, bike racks, uh, cargo carriers, pulling trailers around and everything in between. So uh, it really makes, makes a lot of sense to have one back here. Uh, with this one, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I think it looks really good. For the most part, it's gonna be completely hidden um, and you're just gonna be able to see the receiver tube opening um, and kind of puts off a factory vibe almost. You know, it has good ground clearance because it sits up tight. Uh, also bumper clearance, it sits about flush with it. So a lot of different things are gonna be able to work with it. Compared to some of the other hitches available, um, they're all pretty close to each other, I'm not gonna lie, uh, in terms of appearance and what you're gonna be able to do with them. There's one hitch that will be completely invisible when you're not using it. It's called the stealth hitch. Um, the receiver tube can pull out of that and it, you won't be able to see anything back here at all. So if that's something you're really concerned with, that's always an option for you. But other than that, you know, they're all gonna look fairly similar. Um, the eco hitch, uh, that's available. It does have a little bit higher tongue weight capacity. So if you plan on using a, a big bike rack or kind of, you know, pushing the limits of that, um, that one might be one that's a little more appealing to you. This is gonna be a class three hitch. So uh, it's gonna have the two inch by two inch opening. And this is a super common size. You know, a lot of stuff will work with it. It is going to use that standard five eighths pen and clip. Keep in mind though, one doesn't come with the hitch. If you need one, not that big of a deal. You can always grab it here at each trailer. And honestly, after seeing this one with the pinhole like that, it might not be a bad idea to get a pen that has a groove all the way around it. That way you can kind of go in from any angle there. Something to keep in mind too is if you end up buying a new accessory, a lot of times they'll come with a pen and clip. So just something to think about. The safety chain openings are gonna be a loop style and large enough to allow us to use just about any size hook that our trailer might have on it. We'll go ahead, grab a couple of measurements and these will help us figure out what type of accessories will work best. If you go from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 16 inches. So if you plan on pulling a trailer around, chances are pretty good. You can use a ball mount that has a straight shank. That'd probably be uh, fitting for most people. And if you go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's gonna be about three inches, which is really good. Um, but you can use that information to help figure out that if any folding type accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of your Subaru. When it comes to the weight capacities, gonna have some decent numbers. Maximum gross tongue weight rating is gonna be 350 pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. So you should be able to use majority of cargo carriers and just about any size bike rack, honestly, you know, kind of depending on the weight of your bikes and whatnot. Uh, as far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 3,500 pounds. It's going to be the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. So the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have on it. Uh, I do always like to recommend though, never a bad idea to grab your Subaru's owner's manual. That way you can check in there and make sure uh, your vehicle can handle that much weight safely. And with all that in mind, you know, if you're pulling a trailer, uh, you're going to need the lights to work on it. You know, that way it'll be safe and legal. And to accomplish that, you can always grab some trailer wiring. But other than that, at the end of the day, I feel like this is a, a good all around hitch. You know, it's going to be uh, able to handle just about anything you want to throw at it and looks good too. So really can't ask for a whole lot more. As far as the installation goes, Believe it or not, it is not too bad. You do have to remove the rear fascia, but don't let that intimidate you. Um, Subaru makes it really easy. There's a handful of plastic fasteners you gotta pop out. They're all easy to get to. Um, and this kind of just snaps off and then it, it's wide open. You got a ton of space to work with. So like I said, don't let removing the fascia intimidate you. Um, hopefully you can follow along and we'll give you some pointers and help you out along the way. But that said, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be underneath the back of our Subaru and we're gonna to have to remove the rear fascia. 
And so along this bottom edge, you're going to have a total of seven push pin style fasteners, just like this one here. To get those out, you can take a flathead screwdriver, even a trim tool, whatever one's easier. Sometimes I use a combination of both, but you pry underneath the head and then you can pull the base out. And when you're going through, because there's some other push pins that look the same, but we're trying to focus on the ones that are actually you know, connected to, to metal there and holding our face on. So just go through and feel. So for example, this one here in the corner, we're not gonna take out, but we will take this one out because it's connected to a, a bracket behind there. So we'll just work our way all the way around and get all seven of them removed. And these Subarus are all kind of set up a little bit different too. In some cases, you might have a mud flap if you do, uh, that'll have to get removed. And I think it's just a couple of bolts, no big deal. You can refer to your instructions to give you some guidance there if, if yours does have mud flaps on it. Now, if you move to your wheel well liner, um, along this edge here, there's gonna be a push pin style fastener and we need to take out the one at the top here. So right where the fascia meets the quarter panel. Take a small flat head and these are a little different you can push down on the center of it, and then you can come in and pry behind it. If they're really dirty like this one is, you can spray some soapy water, compressed air in there to help kind of clean it out, but just be careful when you're prying on this, you don't want to break it, you know? So just work your way around and eventually we'll get it out here. Once we get this one out, do the same thing on the other side. And uh, from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we'll also do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. Uh, at this point, with an extra set of hands, we can get our fascia removed. Along the edges here, we're gonna be working. I put some painter's tape, that way, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about accidentally scratching anything. And then I sprayed soapy water in the crack as well, just to help kind of loosen things up. Because what you wanna do is start at the corner, just start to kind of pop it free. There's gonna be some clips all right, that are gonna release. And thankfully these Subarus, they come apart really easily. So more or less this will just unsnap and be careful when you go to pull it off. You may have some wiring that you need to disconnect, which it looks like over here on the driver's side we will. Here's that connector and to disconnect it, you can just push down on the center of the tab and separate it. And then we can set our fascia off to the side. We're gonna to need to take off our bumper beam. Before you do that though, there's this sensor here that's connected to it. We're gonna remove it. So there's just a, a push pin style plastic fastener holding that on. Take your trim tool or your screwdriver and just work that up. And we'll just kind of let it hang off to the side for now. To get the bumper beam off, you're gonna have a total of three fasteners on each side. So one here, one at the bottom, and then one just like this more or less on the inside part there. So uh, we're gonna take a 14 millimeter and an extension, put that through. And pull them all out here. Now we got, I already got the other side off and um, even though there's studs that come through that this sits on, not a bad idea to put your weight into it or kind of support it so it don't fall off. But with all of them removed, we can slide this off of our vehicle for now. If you look inside of the frame rail, there's a couple of rubber plugs. You'll have this one here right towards the back. We need to remove these because this one will be in the way of the hitch. And then this one back here, that's plugging a hole that we're actually gonna use as an attachment point to secure our hitch. So, you can do this from the bottom too if you want, come underneath the car and pry these out or do it this way. Just a big screwdriver and you can pry them out and get them out of the way here. So I grabbed our hitch and I just kind of want to go over uh, how one of the hardware connections is going to be made because it's a little tricky to see. So these pieces are actually going to go in the frame rail, right? And then that plug that we pulled out, the one closer to the front, this hole is going to line up with that. So when the hitch is in there, you come from the bottom of the car, push it up, 
take your pull wire, take the coiled end of it, push it up through there like that. And then it's gonna come out of that opening there in the front of the hitch. And then when you have it like that, you can thread on the carriage bolt. And then when you pull on the other end of the fish wire there, it's gonna drop it down through. So that's how it's gonna work. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a better visual on what we're gonna be doing there. We'll grab our hitch and we're gonna put it in a position. The bumper beam will go back over it. So this is just kind of temporary to hold it in place until we get that carriage bolt on in there. But for now, we'll just take the uh, factory nut there that we removed and put that on hand tight on each side. That way it'll be supported and we can get the bolt, carriage bolt going in there. Under the vehicle, this is the hole that we're gonna be using with our, with our uh, fish wire. And if the hole in the hitch isn't lining up perfectly, you can always come back and tighten down that nut that we put on just to hold the hitch in. Sometimes it'll help kind of draw everything together. Um, so just a word of advice there, but like we talked about, we'll feed this up through there. Drop it down from the hole in our hitch. Well, that'll thread on. And pull this through. Get rid of that pull wire. Then we can get a flange nut started. And sometimes you can take your, you know, your hand or a screwdriver, apply a little side pressure to that bolt, keep it steady, make it a lot easier to get the nut started. And then get this hand tight. So with both those carriage bolts started, now you can, you know, remove the, the nuts and then take the bumper beam. And this is just gonna slide right back into position and for the time being we're gonna have new hardware for the outside and the bottom but the inner one just take that nut again get it on their hand tight and uh you know everything will be supported so we can work on the rest of the bolts sometimes it makes it easier to you know just take your socket and extension and Makes it a little easier to get in there now that the hitch is in the way uh, to, to get this rain down hand tight. For the two outside holes, or I'm sorry, the outside and the one on the bottom here, you're gonna take the new hardware, just a bolt and a conical tooth washer. Make sure you, uh, the teeth on the washer are gonna face this way towards the hitch. And we'll just get, get these started hand tight. Sometimes you might have to kind of shift the hitch up and the bumper beam up you know, just to get everything to line up perfectly. Um, so just, just keep that in mind if you're having a hard time getting one started. You know, it might help to kind of move this around and shift the hitch around too. Um, so it's important to keep them all pretty much hand tight until uh, you get all the bolts started. Once you have all the hardware in place and hand tight for the new bolts, you can use a 17 millimeter. Just snug those down. And of course, we'll change back out to our 14 and tighten on that factory nut here on the inside. For the bottom nut there, uh, you can tighten that down with an 11 16 size socket. And now that all the hardware is snug down, you need to make sure and come back with a torque wrench and tighten it all down to the amount specified in our instructions. So once you got all the hardware torqued down, don't forget to come back on your uh, driver's side here, take that sensor and just simply push that right back uh, into position. Now we can trim out a small portion on our fascia here. So there's a diagram of the instructions uh, that you can reference and they give you some measurements. And uh, I just put some tape, that way I could draw on it and that's what we're gonna be cutting out. Pretty thin plastic. I've used a bunch of stuff in the past to cut it. 10 snips, uh, utility knife, Dremel tool, uh, you name it. I kinda like uh, the multi-tool, so that's what I'm gonna use, but anything will work. So we'll uh, just get all this material removed here.
pop that off. I'll get the tape removed. And if your tool leaves any rough edges or anything like that, you can always come back with a file or some sandpaper or razor knife and, and kind of smooth everything over. With the fascia trimmed, uh, real simple from here, you simply just push it back into position and resecure it the opposite way that you removed it. And that will finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com trailer hitch receiver on our 2021 Subaru Outback Wagon.